I'm Steph from Seas of Change and I'm here today with Rob from Australian Seabird Rescue and we're going to interview him about turtles. So can you tell us a little bit about the Australian Seabird Rescue and their work? Okay, so Australian Seabird Rescue is a grassroots rescue organisation, so we specialise in seabirds, so stuff like pelicans, albatross, even your seagulls, and we also um, specialise in um, sea snakes and of course our um, sea, sea turtles. So why are there so many sea turtles coming into your care? Um, so obviously a lot of our sea turtles do come in care from stuff we do as, as people, so a lot of our turtles do come in care from injury from boat strikes, um, some are coming in care because they've um, ate in things like plastics or balloons. Um, so most of the times the turtles we are seeing, especially on the central coast, is a result from people. Um, you know, it's very rarely we get one that's from a natural cause. And why would you say turtles are eating, ingesting so much plastic? So with plastics, um, obviously a plastic bag in the ocean looks like a jellyfish. So many of our marine turtles actually do like to eat jellyfish, especially stuff like the hawksbills and the um, leatherback turtles. Um, that's pretty much their favourite food for those species. So, you know, in the ocean, a plastic bag does look like jellyfish and they think it's a good treat. Um, even with your balloons, once they bust, um, all their fragments also look like jellyfish within the water. So they just think it's food. Can you tell us about Ella and Sheldon's story? Yep, so Ella was found at Manly, uh, so at Cabbage Creek Bay, which is a marine reserve. So we actually noticed um, Ella on a Facebook post. So I'm actually a scuba diver, and I was going through Facebook, and I was, someone's like, oh, look, I found a turtle today while diving. And I've looked at it and go, well, that turtle's actually quite sick. So we contacted our volunteers in Sydney. Um, they went and free dived and rescued Ella. Um, so the reason why we knew Ella was sick was she had tons of barnacles. And then a week later, we actually found out the reason why she was sick, she actually had passed out a balloon. So obviously she thought that was a food source and ate it and made it unwell. What we're talking about is balloons. So balloons actually are quite deadly within the marine environment. So as you can see, when a balloon busts, kind of resembles a jellyfish. Um, so with a the turtle, they see that and think it's food. And unfortunately with Ella's case, that's exactly what she thought. And she managed to eat this balloon and this string. So this string actually went to two and a half meters. You can imagine inside this little poor turtle that's all tangled up in the stomach that's quite a significant amount of rubbish that's in there. Um, and you can see with the length of that balloon, when she's passed it out, that's quite a significant lot of rubbish like that she's actually eaten. Yeah, size. it's like three, four times her size that she's actually eaten. I know with balloons, like a lot of people like to release balloons. Uh, I know they've got a sentimental value, but what a lot of people don't realise is that after a balloon's released, it actually causes death in our animals. And unfortunately, they go up from the sky, they bust, and with 70% of our o planet covered by oceans, they're more likely to land within our marine environment. Um, with Sheldon, so Sheldon, similar story. So Sheldon was actually discovered by a scuba diver. They've taken a photo. Hey, look, I found a turtle. Um, somebody has tagged one of our one of our people and um, within our organisation, um, Laura. They're like, hey, Laura, this turtle doesn't look well. And also Laura's contacted me and Kathy, and we've gone down and um, managed to rescue Sheldon. Um, so we know Sheldon was also sick, obviously by the barnacle load, and we had noticed that he had a big bite towards the back of him, and um, was later discovered discovered he actually had been attacked by a shark. And then how do you care for these creatures when they come into your care? So when we first get a turtle, um, they actually go into fresh water for 24 hours. Um, that helps rehydrate them. Um, it also kills off the barnacles, which is the most important thing. Um, and then we have to remove the barnacles, try and get them to eat. Um, both our turtles are on antibiotics at the moment and also with Alden and Shada, um, Sheldon when they've come into care at the start we've actually had to give them fluids so it's the same type of fluids people will get when they go to hospital so it's injecting them with fluids to try to get their hydration back up and after that it's just a slow process depending on what's wrong with them um, Ella she'll have antibiotics for a couple of weeks and hopefully she'll go for more x-rays and hopefully all insides clear and then she can go um, with Sheldon um, unfortunately he's got a long road ahead so with damage to his shell in about four once he's going to eat and a bit more healthy, we actually have to do some surgery on him and remove dead bone and stuff like that. And then after that, it's a bit of a healing time. So with turtles, it can take up to 12 months for turtles to actually wow. heal. So how is the Australian Seabird Rescue coping with the incoming demand? Have you been, do you think that the demand has increased? There's been a lot more? Demand has definitely increased. I know, especially on the Central Coast, especially with turtles, we probably only used to get one probably every once a year, twice a year. Um, in the last 12 months, I think we're up to 10 turtles. We've actually um, managed to find. Um, fortunately, some of them haven't made it. Um, some of them we've transferred to Tronga Zoo because we haven't had the facilities to house them. Um, 
but there are more and more turtles coming in, um, which is a shame. So. And yeah. is that because of just human actions? Well, it's human actions. It's also probably got to do with climate change, I'm guessing. Like, obviously, our waters are warming up, so there's more species travelling further south, um, you know, so there's probably more turtles showing up in the area. Um, Central Coast also has got a lot of seagrass beds, so especially Lake Macquarie and Brisbane waters, there are big seagrass beds areas, so there are a lot of turtles that do frequent that area, especially green turtles. So, um, you know, there is the food source around here, and unfortunately, sometimes they get tangled up with people, so and then that's how they get ill. And then for anyone who wanted to get involved with the Australian Sea Bear Rescue, how would you like volunteer or become a carer? Yep, so with Australian Sea Bear Rescue, every year we run a course, um, a training course, which anyone can come along to, um, and pretty much they get trained on how to obviously catch our animals when they're sick and rehab procedures and stuff like that. So we do that every year. Do you feel that the increasing environmental awareness is helping your cause? Um, it is helping, but also I th think the tricky thing is with the oceans is people don't see what happens in the ocean um, obviously the ocean is so deep and stuff like that and a lot of like most people go swimming in the ocean but a lot of people don't see what what is actually happening underneath the ocean so kind of like on land when we have bushfires and stuff like that um, people see that impact because they can see with their own eyes fortunately with the ocean people don't quite see what's happening so probably getting the message out there is a little bit harder um, when it comes to the marine environment um, because people aren't as aware you know, with it as that yeah. would be on land. But obviously, you know, the message is getting out there. There's been some great things happening over the last couple of years in Australia, especially within within the state. We've had the 10 cent deposit scheme. So obviously people are, you know, recycling bottles. Um, you know, we've had the ban on plastic bags starting to happen and stuff like that. So all those little steps are making a big difference um, in the end. Obviously with the ocean, the biggest thing for the ocean right now is climate change, which everyone's starting to work towards now. So. And the other major issue is plastic, which is still a lot of work to go with plastics, um, especially single-use plastics like straws and stuff like that. There's still some fair bit of legislation that needs to happen when it comes to, you know, maybe banning straws and, you know, further um, legislation when it comes to, like, banning balloons and those type of things. So we've still got a bit of work to do when it comes to the ocean. Yeah. And what would you say people at home could do to help? So to help, um, buy, have a reusable water bottle. So that's a big help there. Um, when you go shopping, take your re reusable bags. And obviously, when you go out, say no to using a straw. So those three things can make a massive difference to our to, to our marine animals. And obviously, um, the other thing is we need to kind of like put pressure on our governments to work on climate change um, policies because obviously that's the other thing that's affecting the oceans, and that's going to affect land also in years to come when sea rise sea sea level starts to rise. Obviously, places are going to get flooded, so that's what everyone. Yeah, has that's going to gonna start mind. affecting us. Going to start affecting too. on land, so yeah. yeah. Cool, thank you. No worries, thank you.